so many times the simplest recipes end up being the most delicious. And the same goes for this creamy ham and potato soup. Super easy to make. We're gonna pull as much flavor from it as we possibly can. It's delicious and I know you're gonna love it. And you know me in traditional fashion, we need to start off with a little prep. Sound good? Let's cook. And of course I'm gonna start off with an onion as I always do. I'm gonna be using a yellow onion, but you could substitute out for a sweet or a white onion. Slice off the end, slice it in half, remove that outside peel, and then we want to small dice them. Make sure you definitely small dice it because we want this to easily incorporate into our soup, not have huge chunks of onions. Add it to a bowl and then we're heading right over to our cooktop where I have a Rondo pot over low heat. Next thing we're going to do is add in some unsalted butter. You could substitute out with bacon fat or even cook a little bit of chopped up bacon, render the fat and add it back to the soup. Mm, that sounds pretty dang good. We'll stick for butter for now. Now I'm going to add in our diced yellow onions. Take the time to caramelize these. It's going to take in between 35 and 40 minutes to do so. We're going to come back every five to six minutes, give it a quick stir. In the meantime, we're going to prep a few things up. And when that's done, we're actually going to come back in 20 minutes to add a few things to this. And I always get this question. Why do you use it? And what even is a Rondo pot? Well, a Rondo pot is essentially a shallow, wider pot. It's great when you want to caramelize things and cook things and braise things because you can spread it out all over the pot. If you have a more vertical pot, sometimes you're just stacking and steaming those vegetables that you want to lay out and roast. That's why I use it. It's just about the same size as a regular pot and I absolutely love it. This one here is, it's a Paderno 1810. I will drop a link in the bottom so that you can check it out yourself. Okay, here's what we do now. I want to add a leek to the mix and the white parts of the leeks are what is good to use. This one actually has quite a bit of white on there. So I'm going to cut it up pretty high. Then what I'm going to do is cut it in half. Now that outside peel is usually pretty worn out. So I'm just going to take that off of there and then slice them in half one more time long ways. Now, if you slice this and you notice a lot of green in the inside or towards the back part where a lot of the green was in the leek, we won't use that because it gets bitter and it gets really hard to cook with. So I'll go almost to the end just like this. That little bit of yellow in there, totally fine. Next, add them to a colander. And what we want to do is rinse these really well under some cold water. A lot of times, leeks are very, very dirty. You'll see mud, dirt in there. So we just want to make sure it's rinsed off. Once it's done, just set it to the side until we need it. And now for some celery, we're going to go pretty heavy on these. And what we want to do is just medium dice them. And for the garlic, well, you already know, going straight through a press. I want to use just a little bit of carrot here for color, for texture, a little bit of flavor. Give it a quick peel and then medium dice them. And now for the potatoes, I've got four baking potatoes that we are going to quickly peel. And then what you want to do with these is large dice them just like this. Now to hold them and make sure they don't turn brown, we're just going to keep them submerged in cold water until we're ready to use them. And the last part of the prep, the most important part is the ham. Whether you're using leftover ham or ham like this in a package or even deli ham, you have to know this. Almost all ham you buy from the store is fully cooked, especially the one that you probably are using leftover from a holiday. There's no reason to cook this thing to death. All we want to do is heat it up past the 140 degree mark that's sort of out of the danger zone where bacteria grows. Okay, so with this ham, there is a fat cap on the top. Now you can remove that part. You can leave it in there. It does add a little bit of flavor, but I don't know how much you like to eat ham fat. Totally up to you. Maybe some of you do. Who knows? So what I'm going to do is take a few slices off of this ham and then large dice it up just like with potatoes. This is going to need about four cups or so to make sure this soup is very hearty. Next thing we're going to do is add it to a bowl, set it to the side, now go grab those leeks. It's been about 20 minutes worth of prep, perfect timing. The onions look fantastic, but we still got a little bit more to go. 
Let's add the leeks right in there. Don't forget about the garlic as well. We're pretty low heat, so I'm not worried about the garlic burning. We are gonna mix this in and continue to cook it on low heat for another 10 to 15 minutes. Caramelize them up, brown them up, just like this. Now, this part is completely optional, but I always highly recommend it. Let's deglaze with a little bit of white wine. I'm gonna be using Chardonnay. You could use Sauvignon Blanc or even a Pinot Grigio here. And if you don't wanna use wine, totally fine. Just use a little chicken stock. We're going to cook it until au sec or almost gone. At this point, go ahead and grab your other vegetables like your carrots and your celery. And we're gonna mix these in and just cook for maybe three to four minutes. We're on low to medium heat now. Gonna turn it up a little bit just until they are slightly tender. So now that all the veggies are in there, let me quickly say this. You don't have to use leeks. Since this recipe has few ingredients, I just wanted to add that extra unique onion flavor that leeks add. Now, if you really love onions, just simply double up the amount of onions that we use in this recipe. Now, the other thing is carrots. You don't have to use carrots. I don't see them in a lot of recipes, but I do see them in some. I just want some more vegetables. You could also consider adding in some root veggies like parsnips or turnips if you want. Okay, now that you got that, here's what we do now. We're going to add in our drained and rinsed potatoes that we kept in the water and now immediately add in some good chicken stock. You know me, of course, I've got an awesome homemade chicken stock recipe that you should definitely use. Now what we're going to do is cream it, add in some heavy whipping cream. You could substitute for half and half, but you'd be missing a lot of flavor. Once it's in there, immediately, and I mean immediately, slowly add in some flour while continuing to whisk, and then we're gonna crank the heat up to high. We wanna bring this to a boil. Whisk it for another minute or two. Make sure that flour is completely mixed in there so there's no chunks. That's definitely a different way of thickening a soup that I may have taught you in the past. When you use things like a roux or slurry, you have to really whisk them in there to make sure there are no clumps. This process evenly distributes the flour and it does combine with that butter. Remember what we use when we caramelize the onions at the beginning to make a roux-like mixture, which makes it perfectly creamy, perfectly smooth, super good. Okay, we're rounding third base. Let's bring this thing home. After about only 15 minutes from when we whisked in the flour, it will be boiling, which will help sort of activate that roux-like mixture. You can see how perfectly creamy and thick it is. Now what we're gonna do to finish it off is add in our ham. Remember, it's already cooked, we're just heating it up. We wanna season it up very well with salt and fresh cracked black pepper. And with soups like this, I like to hit it with a little bit of Tabasco sauce. And then last but not least, some Worcestershire sauce, just some like natural good salts there. And now I'm gonna add in some freshly chopped parsley. We're gonna mix it in until it is combined. Remember, season once, taste twice, taste it season it, taste it again. Maybe it needs a little bit more seasoning. You can always add, but you cannot take away. Now let's get ready to eat this thing up. You know I love finishing off my soups with a little bit of fresh chopped greenery like parsley. You wanna enhance the flavor, you could add things like thyme and rosemary if you want. Maybe just a tablespoon of fresh each, or you can combine those for some great flavors as well. This will hold in the refrigerator covered for up to five days, or you can freeze it covered for up to six months. Be sure to thaw in the refrigerator before you reheat it. And it is all about these techniques. Even when applied to simple recipes like this, it renders such great results. When you put them into practice, you will elevate your everyday cooking to a whole other level, my friends. And when it's homemade food from scratch, always delicious, always dang delicious. Okay, we're gonna add a few toppings to this when we plate it up. Here's how you do it. Generously add several large ladles to a big bowl, and then I'm gonna garnish with a little bit of creme fraiche, just like the creme fraiche I used in my prime rib video. And then last but not least, I'm going to add on some chopped fresh chives. If you don't have chives, you can absolutely use sliced green onions. And dang it, let's get in this. 